Americans share with the Germans our very considerable excitement. They installed ordnance in the launch vehicle now. It's dangerous. We bring uh, the research forward in a, uh, in a region where nobody has been up to now. Poised on a launching pad in Cape Canaveral, a powerful rocket with a delicate payload in its nose cone. A spacecraft that represents the extraordinary efforts of two nations to bring the secrets of the sun within the understanding of us all. Man has been fascinated by the sun since the beginning. In ancient Britain, the Druids built a mysterious monument to it. In Egypt, the sun was worshipped as a deity, and its passage from day to night was sanctified. The Mayans offered sacrifices to the sun. For the Aztecs, it measured time. Some artists reproduced it in colorful stones and gold. Others captured its mysterious quality on canvas. Children see it as a smiling face. It is the source of bounty and, as in parts of Africa, an element of devastation. Early man brought the sun down from the sky to within his reach. Modern man journeys upward to understand it. Still, it remains a mystery. A Titan Centaur rocket carries man's latest effort to probe that mystery. Helios, a spacecraft that is to penetrate the unknown regions of the sun. It is one of the most unique missions ever to be launched. Developed by a team of German and American space experts, its success promises to change the basic framework of space exploration. Riding on each blink of the monitors are years of preparation by national leaders, scientists and manufacturers. Project Helios found its beginning in 1966 when former German Chancellor Ludwig Erhardt and members of his cabinet made an official visit to America. The visitors, President Johnson and members of his cabinet, boarded Air Force One for a flight to Cape Canaveral. Chancellor Earhart and President Johnson were ready to talk about the establishment of a joint space program. Germany had always shared America's fascination with space. Scientists such as Hermann Oberth, Werner von Braun, and Kurt Davis had participated in the American space program for many years. Now the two countries would be pooling their knowledge, experience, and financial resources. As partners, they would make greater strides towards an understanding of space. The American space program was expanding to include the efforts of other nations. Europe, as early as 1962, had founded an organization to initiate its own space projects, some of which would be developed in conjunction with NASA. The milestones of American space development were viewed firsthand by the German leaders. This visit to Cape Canaveral represented an important step. It became the springboard for an agreement in 1969 between NASA and the German Ministry for Science and Research. The bilateral effort between West Germany and the United States was expanding. Project Helios was to make Germany a major participant in space research. Total cost would be $260 million. Germany would allocate $180 million towards the mission. It was the advent of a new era in space. Bonn, Germany. Three years later, at the headquarters of GFW, Germany's counterpart to NASA, scientists from the two countries gathered to plan the Helios mission. Germany was to build a spacecraft. The United States would furnish the Titan Centaur rocket and launch facilities. NASA would work closely throughout the project with the German scientists, engineers, and technicians. 
Of the 10 experiments planned, seven would be developed by Germany, three by the United States. Coordinating these experiments, which came from the United States, Germany, and Italy, was German project scientist, Dr. Herbert Porsche. I feel it's very essential that we investigate this space, this part of the space, where many uh, effects originate which hurt our Earth. There are, there's the solar wind, there are the phenomena with, included in the solar wind, like shock waves, like disturbances of all kinds. For, for instance, do you remember this, uh, this disaster in, in Africa, where they had no rain uh, several years long? And uh, we cannot uh, get an answer if we don't investigate all uh, influences to our weather and the earth and to our crops and to our whole society. So we bring uh, the research forward in a, uh, in a region where nobody has been up to now. In the heart of Bavaria, minutes from downtown Munich, is Messerschmitt Belko Blom, a highly diversified company. As a developer and manufacturer of space hardware, aircraft, and mass transit systems, it was appointed prime contractor for Project Helios. MBB has a history of over 10 years in space technology, developing research and communication satellites, including the German-French project Symphonie. Helios is a seven-foot spool-shaped spacecraft, complex and sensitive. It was developed in a dust-free environment to protect its components. For pre-launch testing, three prototype models of the spacecraft were built, a structural, an electronic, and a thermal model. Each was tested for its specific function. The structural model tests the reliability of the capsule's frame and the use of mirrors to deflect the intense heat of the sun. The origin of the mirror concept is explained by German project manager Hans Stutzer. I remember the early days of a project where we traveled through the various NASA centers to see which type of experience we could use for the Helios project. And we were in the Ames Research Center. And as a matter of fact, they had long, long time ago thought about the project Icarus, which was supposed to fly to the sun and had invented a small mirror to reflect all the heat from the spacecraft back to the space. We picked up this small invention, and if you look at the spacecraft, you will see that about 50% of our solar generators and almost all of our central body is covered with this type of invention. Of course, we had to develop additional manufacturing techniques, testing techniques, and bonding techniques to, to make use of this device. So an American invention became a major part of a German solar probe. The second prototype, an electronic model, was built to test the capsule's payload. Ten experiments were designed to study the sun's environment. Of special interest is the solar wind, or flow of proton and electron particles caused by gas bursts or flares on the sun's surface. Another of the experiments offers a unique opportunity to test Einstein's theory of relativity by measuring the curvature of light near the sun. Pasadena, California, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the thermal model was flown in to be tested in a heat chamber. JPL's sun simulator was designed to expose the capsule to a temperature of 700 degrees, 11 times the heat of the sun at the outer limit of Earth's atmosphere. In order to distribute the intense heat evenly over the surface of the spacecraft, Helios would make one revolution every second. The friction of space particles against the capsule's body would be considerable as it hurls through space at a speed of over 30,000 miles an hour. A computer printout indicates the capsule's ability to function as planned by the engineers. Greenbelt, Maryland, Goddard Space Flight Center, where Helios was tested for its ability to bear the stress of launch. With great care, Helios is placed into a powerful centrifuge. Two 
2.4 million pounds of thrust would hurl the capsule into space at liftoff. The centrifuge measures the spacecraft's ability to withstand the force of launch acceleration. The computer readings indicate that all systems are stable. Helios had passed the experimental stage. It had made an important stride towards launch. The spacecraft is designed to travel around the sun in an elliptical orbit. 90 days into the flight, Helios reaches the closest point to the sun, the outer fringe of the solar corona. After 120 days, the capsule is behind the sun. During this period, there is no communication with Earth. But the test data gathered is stored for later transmission. The first orbit is completed after 180 days. Rendezvous with Earth will occur at the end of the second orbit after 360 days in space. NASA recently took solar research a long stride forward with its Skylab program. From its spectacular touch-and-go mission in June 1973, Skylab returned 25,000 unique portraits of the sun. Scientists estimate that the sun will burn for another five billion years. Its energy is created through nuclear fusion, but little else is known about the sun's surface. Solar research is vital to our control over physical conditions on this planet. A better understanding of the sun can help us cope with its menacing and dangerous aspects. During solar eruptions, compass needles on airplanes may swing erratically, ship communications could black out, an ability to predict such eruptions would help prevent many tragedies. Storms, tornadoes, and hurricanes could be anticipated if we understood what is happening on the sun's surface. The Helios mission is an important advance in the exploration of the sun's activity. At MBB, the Helios launch model is completed. All elements tested in the three prototypes are incorporated into the launch model. The payload, 158 pounds of delicate instruments, is the heart of the mission. These instruments are mounted in the central body of the spacecraft on radio platforms. There are numerous antennae, telescopes, and a measuring device for zodiacal light. Almost six years after the concept was born, the Helios launch model was ready to begin its careful journey from Bavaria to Cape Canaveral. Sealed in a controlled environment, every precaution had been taken. Each jolt was anticipated. The vertical integration building, part of a Titan III complex at Cape Canaveral, is located on a man-made island on the Banana River. In this 23-story structure, the launch vehicle is assembled. The Titan III booster and its upper stage Centaur rocket are erected and joined. Helios is thrust into orbit through a four-stage ignition process. One Titan booster, two ignition stages in the Centaur rocket, and a fourth which places Helios into orbit around the sun. At a height of 160 feet, the launch vehicle weighs 1.4 million pounds. In the solid motor assembly building, the Titan booster rockets are added, providing the spacecraft with a thrust power of 2.4 million pounds at liftoff. These two solid fuel strap arm rockets would burn for slightly more than two minutes each during launch. The Titan III is the second most powerful U.S. rocket ever to have been launched. There's an air of expectancy as Helios finally arrives at Cape Canaveral. An extraordinary scientific event. A German space capsule is joined with the fourth stage of an American Centaur rocket. It is a union that requires the utmost in coordination and communication between two countries. To protect the spacecraft during launch, 
Helios is covered by the Centaur Shroud. It measures 58 feet in height and has a diameter of 14 feet. The shroud, divided into two sections, is split off before Helios is placed into orbit. Sealed safely within its shroud, Helios is ready to be placed on the Titan rocket. of Mission Helios from the beginning was NASA project manager Gilbert Owsley. Six years ago when we began this U.S.-Germany cooperation for a solar probe called Helios, there were a number of skeptics that did not believe we'd be at this position today with the spacecraft qualified on the launch pad, ready for launching. In order to arrive at this position of the satellite on the launch vehicle, Germany had to solve a number of very difficult engineering and technological problems. Being able to launch a solar probe to 11 solar constants really required the development of an entire new technology. Germany has mastered this and by providing Helios on schedule with the solution of these technical technological problems has clearly demonstrated that they are a first-rate space power and they have solved problems which are required for a very sophisticated spacecraft. <laughs> The day before the launch, members of the German press arrived to cover the event. They toured the Space Museum, where a collection of historical rockets, launch vehicles, and satellites, including some early German designs, are on display. As they continue on their tour, no one can anticipate the dilemma to be revealed at the coming press conference. Well, uh, a fire drill going on right now on, on Helios. We have, uh, we ran a test this morning in which one of the American experiments was not uh, working properly. We've been trying up till 3 o'clock today when we had to turn all of the RF systems off because they installed ordnance in the launch vehicle now and it's dangerous. Uh, we had up until 3 o'clock today several tests run. We have one more test to run which we are trying to schedule tonight. Uh, this test will tell us whether or not Experiment 5A is the only American experiment in difficulty, or whether it's 5B and 5C. We have determined if it's only 5A, we will launch without the experiment working. If it is all three, 5A, B, and C, we will not launch. Uh, at the moment, we are optimistic and we are hopeful. It may be something which only involves 5A, in which case we would launch anyway. We are all etwas nervous. In spite of their uneasiness, Hans Kutzer and his colleagues present the tales of Mission Helios. They go on to outline the scope of the project, which was a two-part venture. Imminent, if all problems could be solved, was the launch of Helios A. Helios B is planned for one year later. The data from the two missions would be compared to verify and augment the original findings. Angefangen hat von einer Konferenz gekommen, die die Leitung des Frames hier durchgeführt hat. Alle Systeme sind Go, mit Ausnahme dieses Problems bei Experiment 5. During launch, many electronic and technical processes are set into motion. In order to test all of them, each step of the mission is fed into the computers. This computer model of the mission seeks to solve the problems which have arisen in the last minute. While the scientists and engineers continue working intensely to pinpoint the malfunction, American and German officials arrive from Washington. NASA Administrator Dr. James Fletcher is host to Germany's Ambassador Bernd von Staden, members of the German Parliament, as well as other high officials from both countries. They have come to view the launch and celebrate the 10th anniversary of German-American cooperation in space. A tour of Cape Canaveral includes a visit to the control room in the Vertical Assembly Building. From this control room, many historical missions have been launched. The American-Soviet docking satellite Apollo-Soyuz will also be monitored from here. 
In the rocket assembly room, a full-scale mock-up of the Apollo-Soyuz spacecraft is on view. Part of the American-Soviet mission is to be two German experiments. One, the observation of minute forms of life in weightlessness. The other, involving the separation of natural soluble substances under those same conditions. Medical scientists are hoping that this experiment might help produce a vaccine with a very high degree of purity, one which might help in the fight against cancer. As night settles, the efforts to correct the Series 5 experiments aboard Helios intensify. It's a uh, very momentous occasion indeed that we uh, celebrate the 10th anniversary of German-American co cooperation in space. A ceremony presided over by Dr. James Fletcher with an address by Ambassador Bernd von Staden celebrates the German-American cooperative space ventures of the past decade. Outstanding amongst these is the joint research satellite Azure in 1965, which rendered important information on the Earth's radiation belt. Eros A, launched in 1972, explored the upper limits of Earth's atmosphere and was followed by Eros B in 1974. Today, Germany and other members of the European Space Organization are working with America to develop and launch Space Lab. An exchange of gifts symbolizes the friendship and successful efforts of the two countries. Thank you, Minister Finker. And uh, you may not be surprised at this, but we also have a, a small uh, memento to uh, hand to you which uh, does not have a documentary record, but it has some of the photographs that we... It's much more beautiful than you. Thank you very much. Helios, freed of its earlier problems, begins its journey to the sun. While the spacecraft circles the sun, performing its experiments, a network of tracking stations is prepared to receive the test measurements. Goldstone, California transmits the data to a command station in Germany, as does Canberra, Australia. Madrid and the station in Ethelsburg near Bonn complete the tracking network. Overall mission control, a German responsibility, is centered in Oberfaffenhofen outside of Munich. And during the time of this project, it turns out that you, it is hard now to, to divide the payload in an American and a German payload. It's really an integrated international payload. And the data are uh, correlated in such a way that some American experimenters need data of the Germans, and the Germans need the data of the Americans. The data will, of course, uh, be, be evaluated by the, in by the investigators itself. But one year later, they will, laid, will be laid down in the World Data Center and then available to every scientist in the whole world. We feel at NASA that the Helios AMB is not the end. We look at this as a continuing project. We feel it's a unique capability that Germany has developed in going close to the sun. It was a very interesting mission in 1980. The comet Inky crosses the plane of the ecliptic very close to the sun. We feel at NASA that this would be a logical follow-on to study the Inky comet for the first time and to make more measurements of the sun at the maximum point of its activity, which does occur coincidentally at 1980. Germany has created a yearly budget through 1980 for solar research. The demand for energy is growing. The sun is looked upon as a potential source of that energy for our industrialized civilization. Much hope is placed in the future of space exploration by German Minister of Research and Technology, Hans Motterhofer. Now we begin a new era of European space cooperation and American-European cooperation as well. Through a partnership into space, 
In the vastness of the universe, mankind finds the basis for coming together. Thank <laughs> you.